Let's have a look at some of the types of drilling fluid we might actually find in the oil industry now. This isn't actually a, a mud school, so I'm not going to go into great depth about mud. And, uh, but what I, what I am going to do is, uh, is go through some of the basics and just, just, just give you a feel for the range of different types of fluid that you, you can find in the oil industry. So uh, after completing this module, you'll be able to list the basic drilling fluids in use and list, well, some of the basic drilling fluids in use, list some of the basic properties of these drilling fluids, and will also list some of the advantages and disadvantages of using different fluid types. Uh, the types of drilling fluid that you're likely to encounter are water-based fluids and invert emulsions, which are basically oil-based fluids. Um, you can have simple water-based muds, inhibited muds, water-based emulsions, and uh, invert emulsions are basically like pseudo-oil-based muds or synthetic-based muds. Um, the complexity of a water-based fluid, uh, it, it ranges from just basically fresh salt or salty water with very little added to it at all, to more complex fluids with uh, weighting agents, viscosifiers, and chemically active ingredients, which are application specific. Some of the simplest things you might add to a mud are, are weighting agents, just to give it a bit of extra density. Viscosifiers to give it a, an ability to hold uh, particles, such as cuttings. And um, chemically active ingredients would be things like think, uh, chemicals that would give it inhibitive properties. Like you maybe add some clay to the mud before you started drilling with it so that clay wasn't absorbed by the mud while you were drilling. That's one type of uh, chemically active ingredient that you may add. And as I say, they're application specific. I'll go through some of the, uh, some of the types of water-based mud just to give you a, a feel for the, the huge range of water-based mud types that you might, might encounter. Um, they fall into one of the following classes. You can start off with just an unweighted clay water system. You can then end up with a deflocculated clay water system, a calcium-treated weighted deflocculated system, salt water system, inhibitive potassium systems, HPHD deflocculated systems for specific high pressure, high temperature applications, HPHD polymer systems, encapsulating polymer systems, cationic polymer systems, extended flocculated clay based systems, polyglycol enhanced systems, inhibitive silicate, inhibitive silicate systems. Now, as you can see, there's a huge, huge range there, and as I mentioned before, they are uh, application specific. So you d add different things to the, to the water-based fluid to give it uh, different, different properties depending on what you were drilling through and where you were drilling and how hot or how, how, much, how, deep, how hot or how deep it was that you were drilling. Now, just to expand on the terminology I was using there, some of the terminology, i tell you what deflocculated means. It basically means that uh, clay particles or polymers they're kept separate within, within the um, continuous phase of the fluid, the continuous phase being the water in this case. Um, so a deflocculated system basically means that it, it, can, it could have clay particles in there, but they're not, uh, they are not um, clumped together. They are uh, dispersed throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, continuous phase. And the way you, you disperse them or the way you deflocculate a system is to, uh, one, one way is to mechanically agitate it and break up these coagulated masses or flocks of uh, clay particles in a system. Uh, you can mechanically uh, break that up or you can chemically hold them apart as well um, using um, chemical additives to uh, physically uh, cause them to repel each other rather than attract. Uh, it, attract. Uh, if you uh, if you don't deflocculate a system, then you end up with a flocculated system, obviously. So that basically means you end up with clays clumping together or polymers clumping together, attracting each other and forming large coagulated masses. And once they uh, reach a certain, uh, certain size or a certain density, if you like, a certain, uh, a certain weight, they will tend to fall through the system and, and come out of suspension. If, you, if it's deflocculated, they'll be in, in suspension. So looking at uh, some of the simple uh, fresh or salty waters, salty water-based muds that you might find. Um, you've got spud muds, low solids muds, and lignite mud. Lignite being a, a type of coal. Getting slightly more complicated, you've got a, an inhibited mud. Um, basically, mud inhibits the dissolution of drilled clay, clays, drilled clays or other minerals into the mud. So as you're drilling through a clay, uh, 
some, uh, you've probably seen uh, swelling clay if you've ever looked at um, rock samples on surface. The, the, if you add water to a, a tray of um, cuttings, they will tend to swell over time. Um, if, you if you put an inhib inhibitor into the water-based mud, then that will slow that uh, chemical reaction. It will slow the affinity of, well, it, it will stop the uh, clay from absorbing the water because the water's already got clay or, or something in it that uh, is acting in a similar manner. It slows that reaction down, basically. It acts, it acts in a similar manner to the potassium in the clay. Some inhibited muds are like lime muds, gypsum mud, potassium mud, and uh, salt-saturated mud. Salt-saturated being slightly different from these in that uh, if, if you're drilling through salt, um, again, an application-specific type of mud, drilling through a salt dome or um, drilling through a, a bunch of salt, um, if you went through with fresh water, obviously the salt would dissolve and you'd end up with a huge cavern. So you pile a whole load of salt into your mud at surface before you drill with it. It can no longer hold any more salt, therefore it doesn't dissolve the salt as you drill through it and that's, that's a form of inhibition, similar to uh, adding potassium to your mud, stopping clay from being dissolved as well. You can also find water-based water -based emulsion muds, and that basically means uh, water and oil emulsified together. <clears throat> now, you can imagine that if you add oil to uh, a mud, it reduces the torque and drag. It also would reduce bit balling or, through the inhibitive uh, properties of the oil itself, and get better filtration control over production zones, uh, you would alleviate differential sticking because the filter cake quality with this sort of mud's better. And you can also increase, uh, well, all, all of these things combined can lead to an improved rate, rate of penetration and also bit life. Moving on to oil-based muds. Now, it used to be diesel oil. Now, you don't really see diesel oil in the field very often. You now get uh, paraffin-based mineral oil or uh, ester vegetable-based uh, muds. And these are predominantly oil with no more than 5% water content. So if, to call it a proper oil-based mud, it can't have any more than 5% water. Greater than 5% water is really, you'd start to call it an, an invert emulsion mud. The origins of oil-based uh, oil muds can be traced back to the 1920s when we actually used to drill with crude oil. Now the advantages of using crude oil were Obviously, as I've just been talking about, um, the inhib inhibition, the clays don't hydrate and swell because you're drilling with an oil. The clays have an affinity for water, not oil. Um, so that would lead to wellbore, an improvement in wellbore stability. Um, and also, it would improve uh, production in argillaceous sands. Argillaceous sands, as, as I've mentioned perhaps before, um, argillaceous in my opinion anyway, means dirty sands, as in the sand is not like a clean quartz sand, it's got quite a bit of uh, clay material in there. So if you're trying to produce from a, uh, a reservoir with a lot of clay in it, um, if, you've piled a, if you've just drilled through it with a, a water-based mud, that clay um, may have actually been, uh, may, have react <coughs> may have reacted with the base fluid and block blocking up some of the pore spaces reducing the permeability and, co and, and reducing the production capability of the reservoir. If you drill through it with an oil-based uh, mud, then that, that, uh, that chemical reaction doesn't happen, and therefore your production is improved. Salt can also be drilled more easily, since salt doesn't dissolve in oil, so wellbore enlargement is uh, reduced. And the mud properties are more stable because the resistance to contamination is increased, as in if you're well, that's basically similar to inhibition. You're, you're stopping things from being dissolved in the mud which contaminate it. However, um, true oil-based mud had a very low tolerance for water contamination. Uh, if you got water in it, it would ruin the properties of the mud. So they started actually using diesel fluids from around about the 1940s. And these actually used uh, emulsified water to maintain and control the, the fluid properties. So instead of uh, having a a water-based mud with, with oil emulsified in it. Um, we we're using an oil-based mud and emulsifying water in it. Uh, so it's predominantly, I mean, the continuous phase is the oil, but it's got some water added to it as, a, as an, ad, an additive. 
Now, the water reduces the fluid loss, it increases the viscosity, and the oil phase still prevents the water from reaching the rock. So, because this is a, it's an emulsion, but it's not, it's not the common type of emulsion that I was talking about earlier with a water-based fluid, where you've got a bit of oil uh, emulsified in water. This is actually called an, an invert emulsion because it's a bit of water emulsified in oil. And that there are varying percentages of oil, wa oil and water in that, but the, the predominant, uh, the, 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 the main or the base fluid, the, the continuous phase of the, of the fluid is the oil, the oil, the base oil. So invert emulsions are, can also be called non-aqueous emulsions, and they're not so commonly diesel-based these days, and as I said before, they're more, more commonly uh, mineral oil or vegetable oil or synthetic-based oil. And they have emulsifiers in them, which are, to put it simply, kind of like soap, and they're added to keep the emulsion. They basically, you know, when you use soap on your hands, it uh, removes grease from your hands by um, emulsifying water and oil. So the oil-based mud, has, you add some emulsifiers, that keeps the, uh, keeps the water and the oil emulsified. Viscosifiers are also added. Bayrite is the most common density increasing, density increasing agent in these fluids. Now they have the ad advantages of oil-based muds, but they also have the added advantages that water can be used to bind chemicals and, and the fact that they're tolerant, they're actually tolerant of water contamination. Because they are a, an emulsion of oil and water, if you accidentally add some water to it, you, you're not, you've not totally ruined your mud system, it can be recovered. And similarly, when you're uh, drilling through uh, rocks with water in them, a little bit of water contamination isn't going to totally ruin your mud system. Looking at some of the uh, advantages of invert emulsions over water-based mud, generally the bit performance is improved. Uh, so if you improve the bit performance, you're improving the penetration rate, the ROP. And it's, it's improved with, uh, with, with oil-based mud as opposed to, or invert emulsion as opposed to uh, a water-based mud. Uh, why is that? Why, why is the ROP improved? Why is the bit performance improved? Well, basically, the inhibit inhibitive properties of the mud I mean there's no balling of the bit, no bit balling, no clay, basically uh, collecting around the uh, the flow area of, of the bit, and the lubricity also assists cleaning, um, in that uh, oil is coating everything, so things slide past each other much much more easily. Um, cuttings will slide past the bit more easily. They don't uh, tend to stick to the bit because of the oil coating the cuttings and also coating the bit. The solids increase, well, you can tolerate an, in an increase in solids content because the oil is coating the solids and making them less abrasive. Um, for the same reason I was just talking about there, uh, the cuttings slide past the, the uh, steel easier because both surfaces are coated in oil uh, rather than uh, scratching. You know, the, uh, uh, in a, in a water-based system, a uh, sand particle going past steel would tend to scratch it, whereas in an oil-based system it uh, will scratch it less. Um, and all, the other thing is that diamond is actually oil-wettable and not water-wettable, therefore the bits cool, cool better. Now by that I mean the actual oil tends to coat the bit and and physically uh, bind to the steel, whereas water doesn't have that property. Uh, so because it's actually getting right into the uh, surface of the steel, the, the um, microscopic surface of the steel, it's, it's able to transfer heat out of there much better than water could. So you end up with a, a much cooler, uh, better, well, more efficient cooling at the, at the bit as well. Um, some of the more, more advantages of invert emulsions. <clears throat> um, well, generally the well bore is more stable and the reservoir quality is improved, as I mentioned before. Again, due to inhibition, there's no rock reaction and there's no re reaction with reservoir clay particles. And all the benefits of the water-based mud, well, basically an invert emulsion has all the benefits of water-based mud with the added... Um, benefits of having an oil phase as opposed to a water, a water, uh, continuous phase being water. However, having said all that, there are some definite disadvantages to invert emulsions. And one of the first ones that springs to mind is the high cost of both producing them. There's a lot of chemicals, a lot of time and effort spent actually producing one of these mud systems 
if you're producing thousands of barrels of the mud, it's going to take quite a bit of time, quite a bit of effort and a heck of a lot of chemicals. There's also a high cost of handling the waste products when you're drilling with uh, an invert emulsion because you can't just pile it into the sea or, um, you know, it does, it, if you're drilling with a water-based mud, you can pretty much let it drain overboard on an offshore rig, whereas with, a, with a, an oil-based mud, you have to contain it somehow. You either have to send it back, on, back to the land on a boat for cleaning up, or you can pump it into the outside of another well. Or there's a variety of other things you can, uh, <coughs> you can do. You can skip and ship it, etc. Following on from waste handling, there's pollution control problems. If you, if you do have a spill of, uh, of an oil-based mud, then you've got to pretty much uh, shut the entire operation down until that spill is, uh, is controlled. Now, if, if, if oil-based mud gets into the sea, there's uh, environmental problems, there's uh, legal hassles. Um, there's a lot, a lot of, basically a lot, a lot of hassle with these, with, with, a, with an invert emulsion mud, which isn't there with, an, with a water-based mud. And uh, if the mud invades, the, invades uh, a permeable formation, as in the reservoir sand, then it may actually reduce the effectiveness of logging tools. If it invades far enough, it may actually reduce the effect, effectiveness of some of these tools, especially the, uh, the resistivity type tools. And if you're requiring uh, loss circulating material, uh, lo loss circulation material, LCM, it, this has also has a, a quite a high cost associated with it, with, a, with an invert emulsion as opposed to with a water-based mud. And if you're unable to dump the mud, uh, then the logistics are very expensive. And that you, as I said, if you're skipping and shipping or you're, you're sending this mud back via a boat, basically, uh, you've got to have a boat on standby. Um, if you start losing mud, it's not like